So it's all yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for coming this presentation. My name is Jorge, and I am the developer of CruiseScript. So I want to say thank you to GreatCon for bringing me here. And sorry for my English. I am Spanish, and I never speak in English, so it's very difficult for me to be here and talk, and talk to you in English. Sorry, but I think I have to talk about something very interesting. So let's start. This is me. I am a developer, as I said, not a speaker. So I will try to do as good as possible. And that's my info. And I live in Madrid and in Sevilla because my family is in Sevilla and I work in Madrid for a company called Osoko, where we work a lot of with Groovy and Grails. So today we're going to talk about Groovy, JavaScript, and GrooveScript. So as you know, uh, the development of the web is evolving in the, with the years, and a lot of work is now done in the client side. So I think in the future, the server side will just some APIs where you call to them and get some, some info, some data, but all the work in the browser will be done in JavaScript. I think this is the future. So Groovy is our language, we like it, but there is no way to run Groovy in the client side. So that's why I created GrooveScript, that is a translate from Groovy to JavaScript code. It's just as simple as its own. Just convert your Groovy code to JavaScript, and that's all. This is more a practical session. The past year I was here and gave some details about this library, that is GrooveScript, but today I want to show how to work with that and show you how easy it is to create nice a nice reactive application or, or SPA application, but all in Groovy, not in JavaScript. Also, uh, JavaScript is, is a very active and with a lot of developers, so there are a lot of frameworks and library are in JavaScript that we don't, we don't have in Groovy. And also, JavaScript is very fast. I think the, the more interesting thing for us is that JavaScript is very fast. Groovy is not so fast. So other thing is you can create very, very fast things with Groovy running in JavaScript. So some news about the project. The last version is 1.1.1. And in, from 1.1, we have support for required JS. Required JS is something like a package managing for JavaScript. So if your project goes bigger, uh, maybe you have a lot of JavaScript files, but with required JS, there are some style of packaging and it's more more easy to, to know where the things are. So uh, info about GrooveScript is totally open source. You can use it or do whatever you want. And very important is that the code that GrooveScript generates, it doesn't run, doesn't run itself. So you generate some piece of JavaScript code but to run that code, you, you need a library in JavaScript that is GrooveScript.js. So very important, you need that library because as you know in Groovy, there are a lot of dynamic, dynamic stuff. So to handle with that is done with that library. We will see later. 
Also, some links, the website, the documentation in GitHub. Please, if you want to contribute or do you need something, a feature or something to fix it, go to GitHub and fill. Because I actively support this project, so I will reply soon and fix things. Also, there are some nice demos in this GitHub repository, and you can try conversion online. So, for convert Groovy code to JavaScript, just you can import the library and do a conversion. You can convert files or a piece of code or whatever, convert to JavaScript. So, let's see in action. So here I have a Groovy file. But this one is just a Groovy class and some and create a class and call some methods. As you see, it's just Groovy code. I don't put anything like is I have to extend some JavaScript class or something like that, or use any specific types, just the Groovy types, and it's, it's simply a Groovy scrape. I, I don't have to introduce that, na, nothing in your code, just Groovy. So this is the code for convert this code. I have a Groovy file. Just import the library and do the conversion. In this line, set conversion property is because I want to add the GrooveScript.js library. I have a node uh, npm package that do that work for us just with this require from node. You get the library and later the code. So if I run this script, the hello.groovy will be convert. So let's see. Well, with I have run the the script. I use a Groovy surf for fast uh, Groovy execution, but first let's make the conversion. Uh, so we have done the conversion, and now there is a new file that is hello.js. Let's take a look. You see, the first line is what we introduce with the with that option, and later this is converted code. Just the class is now a function, and later we create the fun the class and do that method calls. You see that GS is is the 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 prefix of all the fun all the functions. That that are running with the GrooveScript.js. That's because when you do a method call in Groovy, can happen a lot of things like method missing or get property or property, so that kind of things. So with that is resolved. As you see, the code is not very complex. Just is a function. I set this class for the. I, there is a little support for instance of or things like that. And this is the, the method missing. And this, this is the default constructor that comes from Groovy. In Groovy, you always have a default constructor that accepts a map and do these things. So if I run this this JavaScript with Node. Yes, the code do the same that the Groovy.
Okay, and that's it. it is that is that way? It's very simple. You don't have to do nothing. You don't have to do nothing special. Just use your Groovy code will be converted to JavaScript and will run. So let's back to presentation. Please, if you have any question, raise your hand. Okay, so as you have seen, there are some conversion options. I don't go to explain too much about it, but you can do a few things very interesting. And what is the support of GrooScript? Well, the support is the Groovy core of the Groovy. Uh, all the things about lists, uh, categories, uh, maps, uh, all that kind of things that do you like in Groovy, there are, uh, you can use that. So, for, but for to be sure to be sure about what can you do or not, please see the documentation. But I have tried to support almost all the good things of Groovy. So as you see, and what's not supported? This is very important. So what is not supported? Uh, any not Groovy core is not supported. Any. Uh, input, output, any uh, builder and JSON things, that's not supported, just Groovy core. Also, uh, uh, you can convert Groovy code, also uh, Java code, but the support of the types is, is limited, so you have support, for example, for a write list or has map that are the list are maps that Groovy use, but you don't have support for Tinket has map or something like that. So if you use GrooScript, you have to, to have in mind that you can use the basic uh, types of Groovy and Java, not complex types. Also, in JavaScript, it's not support to have two methods with the same name. That, so I prefer to, to give that res, uh, restriction in GrooScript because if I accept that, I have to do a lot of complex things and the code is not so readable and it's hard to, to find errors or something like that. So I prefer to say, you can do that and Okay, you have to now also that things are not supported. So please have this in mind if you want to use GrooScript. So these are two annotations helpfully for your code because you can annotate any method or class to say that don't convert this. So as you see in the left side, and in the right side, you can put a JavaScript code in your, in your Groovy code. That, that code is like a comment, but for example, in the say something function, when you convert that function, the code of that function will be console.log, will not be empty because no, there is no Groovy code. Just with that annotation, uh, native, so that will be the, the conversion. Also, you can, you can put some Groovy code, for example, in the last function, five, because maybe you want that your Groovy code do something. Well, you can put that code, but the result code of the conversion will be the, the common code. Also, I have had a feature in the, in the library that is the Phantom GS test. So you can create a test using Phantom GS, but write this test in Groovy. So it's, I think it's interesting. So if I run this script, uh, we'll do that test using Phantom GS. You have to be 
you have to install it before. We run that test with Phantom, creating a browser, do whatever, and get result back. So, and um, what's the price of use GrewScript? Well, the size of the libraries, I think, is small. Just 86 kilobytes, and Manafite and, and Zipet is just eight, nine kilobytes. So I think it's, it's pretty small, so you can use in whatever application. And the GrewScript tools, there are a few helpers that I have created to make your things easier. You can use or not. I will show a bit of them. The builder is like a like a groovy builder, but as I said before, I don't support the, all the builders, so I have created a small builder that do the same. Also, I have created a wrap around jQuery to do things like that, because I think it's interesting. So if you want to use jQuery in your project, you, you just to have you have to add GrewScript library, and in the, in the JavaScript execution in the client, you have to add that GrewScript tools, yes. And also, there is a very, very little uh, observable pattern to do that, to use with that functions. It's very, very little, just if you want to play with it, you can use. But if you go more in deep, uh, please use uh, RxJS or something like that, more reactive things. This is only a, a start. And okay, so we have seen that you can convert code and do things like that. But I think that when, when you work in a project, you don't do manually, you manually don't do that conversions. So I have created a Gradle plugin that do that conversion for us. And there is a, dem a daemon listening change in files and convert that Groovy files to JavaScript. So let's see in action. This is a Spring Boot application. <laughs> so the, the application uh, is very simple. Just return the HTML file the HTML uh, files, yes, and when the page load, do a call to the server to get that list of framework libraries. So if we see the code, in the HTML5, we have, uh, we have add all the JavaScript files that, is, that are need to run that. That, that files are in Groovy and converted to JavaScript with the, with the, with the daemon of Gradle. And, and down, just we create that presenter, start it, and, and when the page load, do that thing. So, for example, if I comment this line, nothing happens. So, for example, we were going to see the, the presenter, but the Groovy file is 
is this one. I, I use a model view presenter pattern, but it's very easy. There is a list of frameworks and in the onload function, I call to the server to load that frameworks. As you see, this code is in Groovy, converted to JavaScript, and will run in the browser. But we have in Groovy, we can test it with a Spock or whatever we want. And I think it's pretty neat. So for example, we follow this, load frameworks. We do, our, we do an Ajax call. And also with this function, we say that the result is a framework object that also is a Groovy object. So these functions are in Groovy and you said in JavaScript. For example, we are going to do something like um, in the view. So when we get the list of the frameworks, we draw them with this function. So we are going to change this. And we are going to not show all the framework, just a few of them. We are going to use find all where it. As you see, it's Groovy code, and we have all the good things in our IDEs. So we have code completion, it's just Groovy code. Uh, it put on nine. So I will, I will show only that, that frameworks. So I save the file. The daemon will convert that file to JavaScript. If, if I reload the page, only that uh, framework will be shown. I think it's pretty nice to write Groovy and see the results in the client. So let's continue. So please, uh, there is a guide, the starting gradle, that you can follow to see how does it work, how to do that conversion. And as I said, this is a practical, so I will show another demo about a book. This is a bit more complex application. In the server side, is just an API that also get the HTML file. But in the browser, we have a few of logic. All is writing Groovy. And for example, uh, the, the templates, a few of them are used by the server or by, by the client, by a few of them have use in both sides, in the server and in the client. In the Gradle, Plugin, apart from just convert files, there are more things like convert uh, Groovy templates, so you can use in both sides. Or for example, you have uh, an spy that check change in your files and you can do things there. So let's see. Okay, this is the build Gradle file. So here I add the, the plugin. And for example, here I spy change in files. So when one of that files change, I, I send a message, a message to the server using uh, WebSockets. 
in the server there are a WebSocket server running that, apart from other things, listen for that message. So when the when the server receives that message, say to all the clients that reload the page. So in the in your development process, so you are just changing Groovy files, something will be listening and reloading the page instantly. So the development process is very fast. Let's, apart from that, there is a, oh, I don't see the, okay. Also there is a required GS task, apart from Groovy templates or Groovy, there are a new task for that required GS uh, support. So you say, starting from a file, a Groovy file, convert that file and all the dependency files that are needed by that file, but in the required GS style using that required GS modules. modules. So, this is the task and also is listening for change and reloading things. Let's see the HTML5. No. So this is the required GS configuration. So it's very important that you just to have to add book demo that is a Groovy file that has some dependency to, to other files, but all that dependency will convert automatically. You don't have to add that dependencies here, just to say the starting point. So, so let's see the application in action first. It's also a Spring Boot application. Uh, Grails is based on Spring Boot, so you can perfectly use this plugin to, to generate that JavaScript files. So this is the application. It's a list of books. You can do things like see that books or see or search for something like grew. The, the things that I that I am doing are all in the client side. Uh, so things uh, mark things in red, and all the things I have done in Groovy. I haven't written any line in JavaScript. All is Groovy. So let's see that reload in action. So for example, in the presenter, so when we do the init method, so I can change and put here, for example, Error message. Uh, hello. Okay. So when when I save that file, if all goes goes okay, I have received that something have changed, and the server have said all the clients, hey, reload that something have changed, and here we see that the page have reload with, with this change. So, uh, as you see, this is just Groovy code. I use all the Groovy things that I like. For example, we use trades or, I don't know, just, uh, 
method pointers to do closures or I, I think it's, it's very it's all in groovy. I, I like it because it's, it's very nice to do things in groovy and see the results. So for example uh, For example, here you get uh, the list of books from the server, and where is the cursor? Okay. And you you do a few things like update the list of books, but you see it's all in Groovy, using clusters and all is working in the other side. So, for example, if we do any change here, I don't know. Well, I, I go to do another thing, like, for example, the Groovy templates. Th this last book is this template. That I, This template is only used in the server side, but can be used in the client side. So if I, ch if I change something here, So you see the change directory here. We can add books. Uh, for example, I go to add hello, click conf, me. And for example, I put an error. This logic for validation is also done in Groovy. I, I haven't written anything in JavaScript. So you have changed to. So I send the book to the server, and the server sent me that there are a new book added to the, this counter here, and updated this, and updated this. All is in Groovy. So I don't know, I have to show something else. For example, this this chart is a is a trait and using this annotation I put a JavaScript code directly here. That's that's good because I can put JavaScript code in my Groovy code and the code compiles and runs perfectly. So just in the conversion, do something special. So you can spoke, you can use Spock or any, uh, any other test framework in Groovy to test your code and you don't have to worry about JavaScript. Okay, let's go to presentation. Okay, apart from the Gradle plugin, there is a Gradle plugin, but the only the work that that Gradle plugin does is uh, the um, the tags, because all the convers uh, conversion from Groovy to JavaScript is done by the Gradle plugin, just in the Gradle plugin, do work in your templates. The, the plugin is available in Gradle 2 and Gradle 3, but the Gradle 3 is not, fi is not finished. I hope to finish soon, but you can use. But as you know, in your Gradle uh, application, if you use Gradle 3, you have Gradle, you can use the Gradle plugin. Just this plugin, maybe you can use or not, but you can use both plugins, the Gradle and the Gradle plugin. Apart from Gradle and Gradle, in the client side, you can import that GrooveScript.js from Node or Bower.
Bauer. So the question is, why grew script? Uh, well, I think uh, you can do in JavaScript all that things. It's perfectly okay for me that you use JavaScript. But we now Groovy. We are comfortable with Groovy. So I think it's a good way to use Groovy for all. I, we don't have to worry about JavaScript. The code that is generated is so fast as JavaScript. Okay, if you have to, to work on a game or something like that, that the performance is very important, well, you can use JavaScript, but the performance is very similar. I have created uh, demos in, in 3D or with a lot of graphics and works pretty, pretty well, but okay, it's up to you. Another important thing is you don't have to repeat your code between your server and your client. You just, you, you just write your code once, and that's all. You don't have to worry about something in the client side to repeat that uh, pollo or, or function. Just do in one, in one context. You can test all in Groovy. You don't have to think, in, uh, oh, I have to create tests in JavaScript, in Jasmine, or something like that. Just all is groovy. Also, uh, you can static type your code. If you are comfortable with static code, with the types you want to, you want to type all the things you can do, it's okay. And you have your IV a code completion or something like that. And it's okay for GrewScript that you use your own types and you have more, you are more secure about your code. But the mainly reason to use GrewScript is because it's Groovy. So we now Groovy, we love it, is is very concise, readable, expressive. You all that you will do in Groovy is you see the code and you know what it does. In JavaScript, not always the same thing. So there are a few examples. For example, this annotation component that I have created for the books demo is the counter of the books. So when I annotate this class with component, the, the AST transformation add a method that is a set number. It's the setter of the number property. And when that setter is run, apart from set that number, reload the component using that HTML and do all the work for us. So if we have an instance of counter, just do counter dot number equals seven, the component itself redraw in the client and we don't have to worry. So with the power of AST transformation, we can change our code and it's in Groovy. Also, we can use the Groovy list and map functions that we know. It's okay, you can go to the server, get me all the books, do any filter, uh, any, any function that you know, and you can use that. Also, you can create DSLs using Groovy that will run. This, for example, is a, is a node uh, server application using, I don't remember this. Well, it's a, it's a server, it's very easy and very fast. Uh, to run this, this DSL in the client side and works pretty well. You can use the add delegate to annotation. So you have code completion in your IDE. So it's very easy and very fast to grab any JavaScript library, create your own functions or your DSL or 
whatever, and have all the things in Groovy with, with all the helps of that. As you see, any metaprogramming, well, not all the metaprogramming is supported by GrooveScript, but things like that, or property missing, or set property, that kind of thing are supported, are, are very interesting for your code. Oops. Also, the functional things of Groovy, you can use that or, I don't know, traits, or only supported by GrooveScript. And what's next in GrooveScript world? Well, apart from continue with the Groovy support, because Groovy has a lot of things, uh, I am working to finish the Grails free plugin, and the Gradle team in the next version uh, will create a continuous mode in the next major release is 2.5. This is a, that the Gradle will listen in changing files and executing tasks. So that kind of things is that things that I do actually, but I will have to, I will move to that mode to, I hope, is faster and better support from that. And that's, so if you need any specific feature in GrooveScript, you can say to me, we add to the GitHub, people can discuss about things we can to, we want to add to GrooveScript. As I said, it's a very active project, so just say, just go for it. So if you need something, say it. And okay, any questions so far? Okay. What? Sorry? Okay, you have the converted, uh, the question is uh, how to debug that JavaScript code. So you have the JavaScript, you have seen the code, is more or less readable, but also I have add a, a, a variable in the, in the group script that is, uh, I don't remember, console output or something like that that if you set that variable to through, all the method calls and that things are logged in your console. So it's another help. But you know, it's, it's a JavaScript file, you can put breakpoints anyway. But apart you have that help that I have add. But I think uh, it's, it's more important that you focus on the Groovy code. But, because for example, for me, I start to work with GrooveScript, and I am thinking in the client side, I forget, I don't have any tests in the Groovy side, and you are thinking that something is not working, but in reality, it's the Groovy code that is not working. So it's very important that you have your Groovy code okay, later the conversion, something can fail, uh, GrooveScript is not perfect, but with that kind of things, like checking your Groovy code, you resolve a lot of problems. But as I say, uh, okay, it's JavaScript code, you can debug it or using that feature. Yeah, the question is, 
the how to maybe we can improve to add a debug option to debug in the Groovy site, but we don't have plan to do that kind of things. Uh, so maybe we can improve the JavaScript code generated to with more option to to debug it, but I don't have any plan to put uh, your Groovy code and you can put breakpoints in your Groovy code and the code are running in your browser. I don't have, if you want to add that feature in the group script, we can take a look. Maybe, maybe it can be easy because you can do a synchronization and how, how the code is generated. You can also generate code that has that step by step. So can be, can be a good addiction. I don't know, but you have seen the code is, I think you can follow it. You can put bread points in methods and classes. And okay, but it's a good feature. Yes? Uh, how is the converter created? Is it a, a normal Groovy compiler that's changed to generate JavaScript instead of Python? Or? I, I don't understand. So the question is how that conversion is done? Yes, the question is how is that conversion? So the conversion is done, so you have the Groovy code, you compile that code. So first of all, your code has to compile and Groovy has, uh, has in the Groovy compiler, you get an AST3 of all the code. So I get that AST3 and, f and go through the three and I am generating that code. So that's the way how it's done. So it's important that you ha your code has to compile. Nothing else. I hope you, you're okay, okay. Any more question? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>